Your kill the Killimination Games review. So I made the review on a PS5 platform. I don't know about you, but I had idea the culmination meant when I was given a euro kill for a review, so I had and define it. Culmination in the fact making false of defamatory sentiments about someone. Euro kill itself is portmanteau of Japanese words pardon and kill. The Game title defies the basis of the story in the Eurokill. A group of prisoners claiming to have been falsely accused of their crimes and themselves waking up on a ship bound for Eurokill Island, host of a massive theme park. They are told by the mysterious and eccentric host Binko that if they can survive the coming trials, one of them will receive a pardon for their crimes regardless of their innocence. It's worth nothing that the criminal justice system in Japan is a strict Aquatals are rare, so is character's only chance reputational freedom. As the new entry in the dead game genre, Euro Kill the Culmination Games definitely interested me. It's a genre I'm already fond of, but not the main reason I caught my attention. That's down to the second genre it throws into the mix. Typically other games in general, like the Drangropa or Noni Games franchise, will primarily feature visual novel style storytelling with some light adventures games of puzzle elements. Eurokill features these elements, but it's also happening you playing through the bullet hell shump sections and the end of each chapter. I'm not sure that someone who plays shumps will only my real exposure to the bullet hell style gameplay being in the Naya franchise, but the mix was enough to get my attention and see how the game blends the two. But before I delve into the shump sections, I need to give some more context about Eurokill's story. As I previously mentioned, Eurokill follows a group of supposedly innocent prisoners trying to claim their freedom, but there are a second aspect. Each prisoner is paired up with another person, who the game sells executioner, and they are split into the five teams. These executioners have been directly affected by the crime that the prisoner was found to be guilty of. They instantly creates an opportunity for the conflict with the groups and the very idea of the exciting this me. However, I felt the game did very little with it, and any dramatic payoffs that could arise often never came up for the glossed over. There are two or three moments in the story where the characters learn the truth about the other led some of the better dramatic moments, but honestly, the story left to be desired. In each of these first four captures, you must convince the executioner not to kill Burton, but once they make the definition, they may sound a little great way to inject some stakes, but reality is just for different dialogue choices, picking wrong, die instantly. The answers are fairly obvious, and the mechanics felt like a little half baked. The voice acting in the game, however, did me to make full more dramatic moments of the story impactful. I'm someone who will always play an English dub for a game if given an option, purely because I tend to get distracted in the cutscenes while miss important information. But Yurukel only has a Japanese voiceover. I didn't find it the problem, however. Onichan. But as you can advance in dialogue line by line. The voice actors of Eurokill host Blinko was a particular standout jumping between 5 and 6 voices and tones of the voice was clearly giving her all. One of my biggest problems with Eurokill was I found its story struggle kind of messy. It split into the 7 captors, but the first you have the following separate group with the intermissions in between giving the glimpse at the 5th group progress. While each of these first 4 captors gives you a look of each captors and the characters, to for ultimately fell superfluous. The rest of the story focus on the team from the first chapter and the events of the chapter 2 and 3 and 4 don't really make some difference to the rest of the Eurokill's plot. Also, each team is a, into an individual challenge separating the group for more than half of the game, meaning we don't get to see these teams interact for a sizable chunk of the runtime. This also leads to narrative feeling somewhat disconnected and there is no real intrigue of moments where the game gives you hints on what's really going on until it's not the game closing moments and we are smuggle of something behind the scenes and reason for all this happening, but then it's over. Side effect of having you play as four different teams is the first half of the game that keeps you getting the same game mechanics explained to me multiple times. I get that story each time wouldn't know how those mechanics work, but it's annoying being told the same thing repeatedly.
It feels like come across negatively about the Ryuki story, it's because only one such great setup established in the opening. It's the execution and following through that the game disappointed me. The characters are pretty all interesting, I just wanted to see them interacting in a group more than I did. It's not that you were killed poorly written, it's most that facing felt off. It also didn't help me that the real game mean to be hard revenge and fall flat because the character name is anagram of different Japanese word. Wordplay like that's reliably common in the games from Japan, but it works for a plot real when translated into the English. I hope this team can come together and make an ending story in this world because it's full potential and there is a only little epilogue that I really enjoyed. Regarding Yule Kill gameplay, each chapter will have solving escape rooms, quiz puzzles, sections to the progress. There is a solid variety of these puzzles, and therefore the most reliably will design and explain. There were a couple of times I found myself questioning how to solve them, and while the game has a hint system to nudge you toward the solutions, sometimes they are still not very clear. You also have any relevant clues for the puzzle you are found shown in the bottom corner you look over, but I found some of them to be hard to be read due to their size. You may occasionally even need to look through the dialogue history or sometimes to be told vital information before the puzzle that won't be repeated in the hints you are given. There was one instance of what I found pretty massive leap of the logic that made me generally frustrated when I stumbled on the answer. It involved a bloody knife, a handshake and an assumption that all people shake their dominant hands is in regular proof of the person innocence. As someone who is left-handed but shakes with their right, I think I actually called bullshit out of my TV. At the end of the, these puzzle sections, the prisoner will face your kill judgment. This is where is the sham section come into play. The prisoner and the executioner will be placed into the brain reality, where VR simulation that your brain perceives as reality therefore in the danger of death. Each chapter ends with one of the sections, each consisting of the three rounds. As I said previously, I'm not someone who plays shams, but the game accounts for this. At the start of the game, you can choose between three difficulties, easy, normal and hell. The game recommends easy if you haven't familiar with the shams. With the subsequent modes being for experienced or advanced players, it's worth nothing that you can raise the difficulty once you've begun, but you can lower it if you picked a mold beyond your ability. I will say easy don't make it total breeze, you still have to engage and can still lose, but the difficulty is significantly lower. I never got a game, but when I tried the first jump in level game score attack mode, I found the difficulty jump significantly and I was going through the lives fast. So the boss fights. All the end of each round you will face off against the your executioner in a boss fight. It's worth mentioning. These designs are great and backgrounds and levers are thematically timed to the chapter's plot. During the boss fights you will have to break through the the executioner projectors, giving evidence from a choice of five options that proves you innocence and shakes their beliefs. Choose wrong and you are lost three lives. In the final round boss fight you have to navigate the main maze, recalling all information you collected to prove your inconvenience and convicting you on the execution to pardon you. It sounds more interesting than it's boiling down to another self multiple choices questions with the obvious answers. Even true, I found some of these mechanics a little underwhelming, it's still nice to see a developer trying to add a little extra something. If sequel does happen, I hope they tighten these mechanics up because the formula is good, it's not just quite there yet. So. It's not by mean a bad game, but Eurokill is just never manages to hit the same heights as its contemporaries. There is solid groundwork here, and for a sequel it has a unique selling point in this sham sections, and the puzzles are mostly fun. I wanted to love it, but the story didn't come together in a satisfying way, too many mechanics felt half-baked redirent. But thank you so much for watching. The developer was the Izanagi Games and the publisher is Denise America. So thank you for watching, as I said before, have a good one, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, bye!